Welcome back, Mr. Goodberry. The first Star Logistics Studio is fully equipped and ready to record. Welcome to Bengals on the Brain, presented by First Star Logistics. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry. This is episode 55. Keeps going up. Crazy. But we're going to continue our film reviews. Moving away from defensive tackle, we're not done. I just sometimes I need a spark and get, you know look at some more fun positions, although I like defensive tackle. But uh, there are definitely a few guys that are popping at the Senior Bowl this week that I'm going to have to circle back around and get videos on. But I wanted to go back to tight end. Just for some fun, we did Brock Bowers, so you can go back and watch that one if you're wondering why we're not starting with Brock Bowers. We're going to guys that are probably, at best, a second-round pick and Jatavian Sanders out of Texas, and then probably a fourth-rounder out of Florida State, Jaheim Bell. So we're looking at guys that, hey, you're probably not going to be able to address tight end in round one. We don't expect Brock Bowers to be there. So these are two guys that are athletically extremely gifted. Like, we're talking fast. Elusive, especially for Jaheim Bell. I mean, yards after the catch, the guy is hes what you want there. Um, not particularly big. They're both move-type tight ends, which means you are going to want to have Drew Sample as the Y tight end that can block on the line of scrimmage or uh, maybe assign someone like a Colby Parkinson or, or, or whatever and, and pair them with Tanner Hudson. But the idea with these two and why I'm so intrigued with them is their blocking. So not only are they weapons as receivers, but I was like, okay, I saw some clips. Let me see the whole footage and all the film and how they block. And the way they're used at both of their programs, it's like that's a fullback in today's NFL. And even I, I noticed this originally watching the Senior Bowl practices, and Jaheim Bell out of Florida State was actually lined up as fullback. And I'm like, wasn't he a tight end? I, didn't I see him split out wide at receiver and things like that? And yes, all of that is true. So we'll get to these two guys, but I want you to think of them like move tight ends slash H back slash fullback like maybe a uh Cal Juszczyk from the 49ers as they're playing in the Super Bowl this week the uh, limitless possibilities you can do you can have you can employ with these two players let's jump into the film number zero for Texas is Jatavion Sanders our focus for the first video here today and you're going to see him off the line right away. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a move tight end. First, I think it's his first snap. He's kind of looking like he's going half speed. And that was my first. Uh, sometimes that first reaction is like, oh, maybe he's soft. You see him off the line. Then you see him block kind of gingerly. And you're like, eh, okay. But then it, it changes pretty quickly. Blocking the defensive end on that play he's more on the line of scrimmage so we're going to see the versatility is going to be a big thing how often they move him around and use them in different ways and on this play you're going to see him help pass block and it's what he does afterwards so he's just staying in for the play action helps chip a guy and there's the screen down the field and he's going to take off and run downfield and yeah that's him leading the way right there so he's running with this running back and even looks faster than him in a lot of ways Peels back, gets the final block. The running back still falls and doesn't make it in the end zone. But just focus on focusing on Jatavion Sanders. Very high effort here. This is so like its first two blocks. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Nothing really to, to say. And then third play, I'm like, oh, there's some effort. There's some hustle. There's some speed out of number zero there. And he's projected to be a second round pick. I think he's 57th on the consensus rankings right now, taking in all of the draft rankings from around the internet. Should put him in the range for the Bengals at 49. So now let's finish this and let's let's get it in the end zone. He's off the line and coming all the way to the left and chopping the defensive end on that side. This is a very normal play. We run this even in the NFL with the Bengals. And he gets his job done. Running back cuts right up the middle. And it's a touchdown. So if you're unfamiliar with move type tight ends, very different than the big six foot six, 260 pound. Y type tight ends that are on the line of scrimmage. So you got inline guys that are on the line and they're up there blocking and they're physical and they can do all that. Then you have the move tight ends that are in the flex tight ends, H backs that you're going to move all around and run them all around. And these guys today both have speed and it gives them the opportunity to do some creative things with them. So he looked like he was blocking. 
They probably should have run that from the left hash, give him more room to operate. But there's our first catch for Jatavion Sanders, who caught 99 passes in his college career. This is not one of them. Hits him in his hands. I don't think he would have gotten both feet down, but maybe it would have been differently had he have caught it. You would like to see him catch that, obviously. Remember, the first impression's here, so let's not let's not kill him just yet. He's got a down block and dig out that big defensive end, and he does his job there. We're going to see a lot of blocking in this TCU game, but TCU is a very good team. Man, look how he lifts that guy. I mean, that guy's 300 pounds easy, right? Watch him get underneath and lift. And that guy's on one foot fighting for his life. Jatavian Sanders, good job. You're going to pay for it here, though. 25 is not too happy about it, or whatever number that was, 52 maybe. All right, we got him on the line of scrimmage this time, helping block with the right tackle, down blocking, washing that defensive end inside, does a great job. Again, these are good blocks. Now we're going to have him off the line and be in motion at the snap. So how do you use him like a fullback? I've referenced that a few times. This is one of the ways they're going to bring him in the backfield. They're going to orbit motion him and get him out to, to block in front. They're also going to bring him in motion and snap it while he's in motion. And it's going to give him a running start. So you start him off on this side. The defense is thinking heavy on this side. Although at this time they've got extra linemen and a tight end over here, but in other plays and he's going to be able to ha he has the speed to run full speed across the field and still locate and target a corner, a defensive back and get hands on him. And there he does right there. Some of them will be better blocks, but the, the fact that you can do that is a benefit to your offense. He's the point man here on a three wide receiver bunch set, and he's going to catch this pass over the middle on a deep crosser. Contested grab, too, because the ball's a little bit behind him. You'll see from this angle, it's a really nice catch. Remember, you'll see him from the left side coming in, and his route could be a little bit better here is you kind of want to stem this upfield, show like you're going vertical to get this corner that's in man coverage. I don't know if it's a safety or what, but to get this defensive defender off of you a little bit. If you look more like you're going upfield, you'll get him to back off and kind of not lean into you so hard so that when you do cut across the field, he's not right on your hip pocket like he is right there. So we could use a little bit better route, but man, what a catch right there. I mean, it's... This is behind the back of the DB, and he catches it off his back, off his nameplate. That is awesome. We saw some great catches out of Brock Bowers when we watched that video. This is up there with those. He's pass protecting here, letting the quarterback find some space. And he just throws it away. But I do want to see them pass protect. I do want to see if he can do that. I do want to see him block these guys in space and continue to block as he was right there. He's on the line here, and he's going to run another deep crossing route. This time, the off-coverage defender, he knows he just has to run fast and run away from them. You really don't need to set up that vertical like he did last time or like he, he should have last time. This time, it's just run through it and run past it and get away from him. And then a nice kind of high point. He could have probably got it at, at, at a higher point, but getting up between two defenders, making the catch, and securing it as you get hit. Again, we're bringing him back across the line. He's landing his block, landing on his mark, allows the running back to cut up field behind him. That's like a lead block from a fullback right there. So you want to see it again with that in mind. He's going to come from this side. And he's going to go all the way across and be a lead blocker. Sometimes he's just cutting off the backside. Sometimes it's a lead blocker. But I think like this time it's cutting off the backside and he's he's going to cut behind him. But very similar to a lead blocker in, in that he's got to take this guy on and displace him. You see the contact right there, the shoulders and the head snap back of number eight. He does drop his eyes at times, like you saw right there. It will get him in trouble later in this game. He'll have a couple of misses. And I think he gives himself a little bit of a stinger. He's in pass protection here. Look at his eyes. Very active. Sees the stunt going on inside and takes out 95. It's a smart, heady play. A lot of blocks so far for these guys. For a guy who caught 99 career passes, we're talking second round pick for a guy that's going to run a four, four, five, four, five, zero. So again, bringing him across. Now he's lead blocking. So you're bringing him across because he's that type of athlete. He locates his target and then neutralizes his target. So you got to have the athleticism, the intelligence, and then the strength and technique to be able to accomplish these blocks. The Bengals don't have someone like this, to be honest with you. 
As much as they put Drew Sample in the backfield, he wasn't doing this. He isn't, wasn't out in front of the running back lead blocking. This gives you something that you don't have. Even Tanner Hudson's not doing this. Tanner Hudson's a big slot, basically. So, like, he's your move, he's your flex tight end, but he's not the H-back part. He's not the fullback part that you're getting out of Jatamian Sanders. Again, he's climbing up, taking this linebacker, washing him inside, sealing that, and the running back picks up six, seven yards. Again, we're going to wind him all the way back around. He's got to locate and displace, and he does. And we've got a nice explosive run here. So a whole lot of blocking. This time, not so much as he gets his arm tangled up a little bit. Just throwing your shoulder into these big guys sometimes. Not the best idea. But he's on the right side here. Off the line. He's going to fake like he was going across. Now he's going to get out in front. And DB takes him down after a short gain. His career missed tackles forced as he's blocking this guy right here. 11% per catch. That's one of the lowest in this class. So he's not a tackle breaker. He's an outrunner angle type guy. He's going to chip block, go out into the flats, and then get blown up by this corner, the boundary corner, which I don't know if this is a fumble or not. Obviously, I'm just watching the film. We never get clarification when you're just watching film. So he's coming across the block again. Nope, he's faking it. He's going to go all the way out on this reverse to block the corner. And there's a fumble, and Jatavian Sanders makes up for his previous fumble. Maybe it wasn't a fumble, but he recovers this one. He's going out to the right side here, just running a quick out route. A lot of traffic underneath. This is a third down type of play that you would run all the time where you can isolate your tight end because you're confident in his speed. That these other guys are going to try and, you know, disrupt the, the whoever's in man coverage on Sanders, and he's fast enough to run away from it. Number zero there, he's going to see as he turns infield that nobody's there. Whatever happened in that zone coverage going to sit down make a catch in front of a safety he knows he's going to take a hit from the free safety you still got to be able to go up and get it and he does brings the ball down able to secure himself almost breaking a tackle again 11 percent missed tackles force per catch low rate same play they used earlier i mean look at this this is a fantastic play number one and if he hits this block i mean he's gone this running back's got to be gone he misses it and that's probably his biggest miss of the three games I watched. We're going to leak him out and then almost like a wheel route towards the play side. This is a play a lot of teams will use and try and get it once a year at least. Whereas you got to fight through this trash a little bit. The linebacker's not really paying attention to you and you leak up the side. And he's fast. You just need him to break these tackles and stay on his feet. It's really the biggest knock I have on him is I wish he broke more tackles. There we go. Hit that second level defender, let your running back cut up behind you. It's almost an explosive run. Good tackle. Not this time. 15 is angry. Watch him get underneath him. He comes in motion late, gets underneath Sanders, and blows him backwards, and then makes the tackle. Who's 15? Someone in the comments is always going to tell me who these players are. Let me know who 15 is, if he's a prospect this year. I really appreciate when you guys do that, by the way. Breaks through the contact. Has to split two defenders. Wide open. Now, here's some yards after the catch for you. Not really breaking tackles. Maybe a little stiff arm there. But he outruns angles. You can see that speed. And there's a lot of plays that I didn't clip in here. Because I try to keep, and thus the route is fantastic. I try to keep the receiving plays to plays where he gets targeted. But there are a lot of plays where his vertical speed, very, very impressive. Last year, Luke Musgrave had the best vertical speed of any tight end in, this in that class. I would say Sanders is pretty close. Brock Bowers was nice, but Sanders was, man, his, to, to Luke Musgrave, that, it, it, that can be a weapon for your offense as defenders are really have to be aware of that guy stretching the seam and really forcing those safeties to get deeper. So we get to see his run after the catch here. He's about the same size as Brock Bowers, too, if you're wondering. He looks thinner. His calves are kind of thin. Good job here. I like the way he gets in front. And this goes in for the touchdown after his catch. I like the way he gets in front here. He's got to get play side, right? This 92 is shaded. We know it's it's an inside run. 92 is shaded inside. So for you to get in front and wall him off with some snap quickness and then athleticism and strength, that's a good job. 
And now that guy's playing in case there's a backside, anything happened there. But still, you have to get in front of him. And then we're going to get a tight end screen. And he was down. And they, they're called holding on this, but we don't care. That doesn't affect our evaluation of Jatavian Sanders. So Jatavian Sanders, I watched a few games, put on the highlights because they, these weren't his best receiving games. There were some other ones for sure, but type in YouTube Jatavian Sanders highlights, you'll you'll get them. There's I didn't have the film for those, so we don't share them. But second round pick, you get an athletic upgrade. He'd be your at most athletic tight end, even if you bring back, I mean, obviously, Drew Sample and Tanner Hudson. Sanders would give you something you don't have. And I think on a lot of those blocks, looking like a lead blocker or inserting him from the tight end spot, that gives you a lot that you currently can't do. I mean, tell me somebody like Kyle Shanahan wouldn't use somebody like Jatavian Sanders and use him correctly. The next guy probably even more fits that profile and Jaheim Bell out of Florida State. Number six from Florida State is Jaheim Bell. We'll see him come in motion on the left side there and then scoot all the way to the right and get in front of the running back as the lead blocker. So very similar to what we were talking about with Sanders, how you can use him as a lead blocker from the tight end position because he has the speed to do it. And here he is in the slot right away and they're running him up the seam and it's wide open. He slows down a bit there. I think that ball should have been on him a little bit more. We'll see as we slow it down from this angle. I think he, I mean, I'd love to see him catch that, but go up two hands and give it a good effort. He's just under 6'2 and 245. So that's, you know, important why they're using him so much as a running back, fullback, H back, and why they are at the senior bowl. But his length, his arms are actually longer than Jatavian Sanders. His wingspan is two inches longer than Jatavian Sanders as well. So he's got some good length to him. You can see it. Here he is. He's going out on the screen pass. I mean, to be able to throw screens. And this is something that I said during the Brock Powers. Uh, video. I said, hey, being able to throw screens at tight end, that'd be nice. And people were like, I don't want to throw any more screens at a tight end. Yeah, but that's because we've been watching Drew Sample and Irv Smith and Hayden Hurst. And these, I mean, we haven't had an athlete at tight end in forever since Jermaine Gresham. And they storm screens all the time. And he just absolutely maul people. Uh, he's chipping out here, releasing into the flats as the check down gets sandwiched between two defenders as he catches sort of a low ball here. But you can see how they use him. He's kind of off the line there. He's just to check down. This is what the Bengals would do as well for a lot of these. He had a low average depth of target, but he got a lot out of it. So we've got a pass protection play here next. I want to make sure I set it up correctly. So he's in the back, not exactly backfield. I mean, tight ends would normally be set up here. This is more like an H back fullback positioning. And you can see the way his eyes are going back and forth already. He's going to be pass protecting. And he comes and helps out with his interior lineman picking up number 12. Great job allowing the quarterback to find his third read in a big explosive play. So how about take Drew Sample out of that third down back roll and put Jaheim Bell in there, right? Cal, you check that thing. And give, your, give, you, give yourself somebody that's a little bit more athletic and do a lot more after the catch. Jaheim Bell is the best tight end statistically after the catch in this entire draft. And that's what Brock Bowers being a 96th percentile guy after the catch. We're looking at a 98th percentile type guy. Again, getting him out in space to block, lead blocking, doing his job. I like this too because you see he's just supposed to block and then leak out for the quarterback, but the, the defensive end sees it and stays with him. So as he turns to the quarterback to see, like, all right, what's going on behind me? Because you can't always tell when you do this. He's boxing out that defender. He can feel the defender behind him, and he's doing a good job just saying, like, okay, I can't let you just have a free lane to the quarterback. And then he turns and gets finds the open field very naturally. He does, he gets a yard, right, of, of gain. But that's a good play to save your quarterback from um, having to throw it away. He's in the backfield again. We're picking up pass protection again. Look at him get out and in front and turn the guy inside to allow his quarterback to get out of there. And we're talking pass protection here. It's a nice little out route, hands catch, get your feet down. He's in motion, stems this guy vertically and snaps it off towards the boundary, catch away from his body, gets both feet down. It's a nice catch. It's a nice play. He's had over 90 career receptions as well. They're giving him jet sweeps here. The camera angle stinks, I know, but 
You're giving them jet sweeps. We'll get to another one later. That's awesome. Bringing them in the backfield again here. You didn't think we'd be watching a running back today, did you? Hit them with a little swing pass. Make some guys miss. Run over and through people. Don't go down until the very end. He set off the line here again. He's going to leak out because he's athletic enough to jump over people. Go right ahead, Jaheim Bell. I do like, and there's a lot of people that hate the, the leap, the hurdle. Give it to me. Give me all the hurdles. I love it. Now he's lead blocking for the quarterback keeper to the outside. I mean, the fact that you can do this, this is the last play against Duke. The fact that you can do this from this side and he's going to get out in front of the quarterback, land a target, hit him, quarterback runs it in. That is different. We cannot do that with anyone on the roster or expected to be on the roster. He's lined out wide here. He's going to catch a, a screen, make it tough on LSU. I think this is the first game of the year, and that might have been their first play. I remember being early in the year, but just being hard to tackle, breaking tackles, being tough after the catch. We're helping out blocking with the left tackle here. Get on her, give her. The end of rib shot, climb up, get to the linebacker, get hands on him. Nice square balance. That linebacker eventually gets off and makes a tackle. Very nice, number four, honestly. Uh, but Jaheim Bell did his thing there. I mean, you can't expect much more than that. We got him in the slot, coming across. He sits down here, right? He turns around, and he's like, okay, uh, the quarterback's getting pressured. It's off screen. You'll see it on the next angle. And he goes, I need to run and make myself available to the quarterback as he goes into a scramble drill situation. And he does. Finds the open space. And drops a really nice pass. So, you know, that stinks for the evaluation purposes. I would really would have liked to have seen him catch this. I mean, it's right there. But drops happen. Don't overvalue drops. And this is we're coming off of just we're still fresh off the John Ross years. But don't overvalue drops. It is not a very sustainable stat year to year from college to the NFL. Some guys never drop passes in college. They drop in the NFL. Some guys drop in college. They never drop again in the NFL. Some guys drop. 15 passes one year and then one pass the next year in the NFL. So it's very volatile. Don't kill the guys unless you see like some robotic hands or anything like that. So he's out there lead blocking. Connecting with his target. Keep eyes on him here because he's going to finish this one and then let him know about it too. Yep. Got him in the slot. He's going to fake like he's blocking for the screen for the discount double check. And he's going to take that upfield. Be able to hit the burners, hit the Jets. Make sure you watch the Boston College game, too. He was a monster in that game. Didn't have the film for it, but the Boston College game for Jaheim Bell. Now we're motioning him back inside here. And Florida State just ran it down LSU's throat. And we're bringing him across. And he's lead blocking, losing his helmet, getting his helmet ripped off. Number four is mad about it. And now we're getting to the end here. And we're going to bring Jaheim Bell from. The left side, off the line just a little bit. I want to set it up, make sure we got it right. So he's actually out behind this wide receiver. And we're going to get a jet sweep. I mean, some people may say, I don't want to run jet sweeps with our tight ends. Who else are you running them to other than Jamar Chase and maybe Charlie Jones? And maybe we can do a little bit with Chase Brown now. Those are two guys you just drafted. It's a major hole if, they, if neither of those guys end up working out long term. I want to be able to run screens to the tight end. I want to be able to... to Use them like a fullback. I want to be able to run jet sweeps and do more creative things. And this is how you do it. You get guys that are, have the versatility to do it and the power to run with it, the speed to run with it. I mean, this is a great play. I'd like to be able to do this. That would be fun. Look at it. Does that not look like fun? Inserting yourself into the end zone through number 24. Give me that. So I really like the idea of Jaheim Bell, especially the versatility, the speed, the yak ability. Uh, there are some highlights out there where he is, is blazing. If he runs a 4 4 5, I won't be surprised at all. And then he'll be like, people, his third round pick? Maybe. I get him in the fourth now in any of the mocks I do, and I'm extremely happy with that. Sure, he's not your prototypical looking tight end, but his production numbers are really good too, in, in comparison to even Jatavian Sanders. Yards per route run, which is huge in predicting future success as a receiving tight end. Jaheim Bell is 2.30 yards per route run over his career.
if you think that's high, Brock Bowers 2.64, which is 99th percentile. Brock Bowers is the most uh, productive tight end in a long, long time. Jaheim Bell is number two. No one else is over two yards per route run. So when you look at this, Jamie on Sanders 1.8, which is good, still slightly above average. But Bell and Bowers are elite in that category, and that usually predicts future NFL success as a receiver. The other one is missed tackles forced per reception. So this is a percentage thing. Brock Bowers, 25% of his catches, he ends up with a missed tackle forced. Uh, Jatavion Sanders, 11%, which I said is super low. Then you get the Jaheim Bell, 38% of his catches, he ends up making somebody miss. One third is nuts. It's banana lanes. So uh, you're talking about a guy that could definitely end up being a sneaky under the radar pick in addition. And I'm just talking about getting a weapon for this offense, right? It doesn't have to be a first round pick. I know we need to fix the O-line and D-line, things like that. We're going to get to the offensive line prospects. But there are 10, 10, if the Bengals make 10 picks, I can see them making this roster. I've heard people say that they don't think that can happen. Listen, tight end, you could have two guys. You could add a running back. You could add a receiver. You could add two offensive linemen, three. Would you really kill them if they added three offensive linemen? Two defensive tackles, a linebacker, a corner. And if they took a safety, I wouldn't care. I mean, we're talking this team could add a lot of talent, but I think just looking at the weapons specifically, getting more athletic and getting more explosive at tight end, getting more explosive at running back, and then getting bigger, stronger. Because I I think if Mixon's gone, you're going to need a power back as well. So you're going to want to get a guy that can get in there and break tackles and turn out the short yardage. But uh, yeah, I would take, would I take Jatavion Sanders in the second round as of now? I would. And would I take Jaheim Bell in the third and fourth? I would, and I, I think it'd be fun. So tight end class, a little bit undersold out there. There's other guys. I want to get to Ben Sinnott out of Kansas State still. Um, talking about a, another guy in that similar mold that can block and catch. His numbers are fantastic. So we've got a few other tight ends to get to. This has been Bengals on the Brain, presented by First Star Logistics. I've got, I'm going to do a mock draft and a mock offseason next week for you guys. Now that we've got an idea, a few of these players, how can we target it? How can we make it work? Until next time, Uday. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.